this act that I do is actually very low energy, so <laughs> I needed to get that out of the way. You are right? Um, so, uh, you might have heard that my name is Fauzi. Uh, that's a Lebanese name. Give us a cheer if you know what Lebanon is. Yay! Yay! Fantastic. Um, so, for those of you who don't know, Lebanon uh, is a small war-torn country in the Middle East, right next to Syria, which is a war-torn country in the Middle East. <laughs> <laughs> right, right above Israel, which is in the Middle East. But there's no war there, okay? Because they follow international law, so that's great. Yeah, they, they follow international, that's great. They say people in that part of the world are holy. I think it's the shape the bullets make. <laughs> but I don't know, all right? I don't know. So, um, when I do tell people I'm from Lebanon, they say, isn't there like war and shit? <laughs> yeah, isn't that war? There's that war that went on. Yeah, there, there is. There's a lot of fighting every day, every night, every day. But they do take a break for lunch. <laughs> In that respect, it's a civil war. <laughs> <laughs> what we did there, ladies and gentlemen, is a pun on violence <laughs> in the Middle East. And I feel really bad about myself. But it's funny, so fuck it. You could do Rwandan genocide if you wanted to. Yeah, the Tutsis, they're dead funny. <laughs> no. <laughs> All right, no. Okay, so so I, I'm uh, I'm uh, Lebanese, but I'm also British. I moved over to London when I was about um, uh, four. Lived there about twenty years, and I, I struggled for a while to realise what it is to be both British and Lebanese. All right, uh, I've come to the conclusion that what it means is you're quite beardy. Uh, a, bit, a bit tanned, uh, but you've got this beautiful, eloquent accent. And, and I've tried to compare myself to Jesus. <laughs> no, because he, he too, like me, was from that part of the world. Yeah, uh, he, he was also quite hairy, a bit tanned. And I imagine he was eloquently spoken because I had massive following. But I guess the main difference between me and Jesus is that he's holy... But it may have been the shape the nails made. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not sure about that. So, so what we've done there is mock Jesus. <laughs> that's not that's not really funny. So let's let's get on. Let's get on. So I'm 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 quite happy to be uh, both British and Lebanese. And my and my my mum, she is um, also a bit uh, a bit like that. She she's got a bit more of an accent than me, but she's adopted British culture because she accepts that everyone from Essex is a slag, uh, and that's all she knows about British culture. Um, my brother uh, has this, you know, like South London accent, yeah, 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 sick, 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 yeah, you get me, yeah, sick, 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 and he's actually quite ill. So, <laughs> so he's, he's dead. It's not funny. It's not fun. No, it's not funny. But my dad is, uh, is the one I worry about because I, I wondered for a long time, like, when would he ever adopt British culture? Uh, he did try very hard. Uh, he does wear a sovereign ring, uh, gold necklace, uh, shell suits, drives a van, is a builder, swears at parking attendants, calls them foreign even though he himself is foreign. <laughs> And I think he's almost there, being British. <laughs> but when I, I, I knew he was British when uh, he took me out drinking with him. And he said, let's go out drinking. And it wasn't when we were in the pub and he started ch chanting at the football that I knew he was British. And it wasn't when he was downing several pints of Stella that I knew he was British. And it wasn't when we went to the kebab shop and ordered some bland thing and some chips that I knew he was British. It was the amalgam of all those three things and the subsequent puking all over the floor. That's when I knew he was British. And I was filled with pride and disgust. <laughs> and I thought to myself, he is truly British. But then I, I looked closer at the, at, at the puke and I realised he'd made a map of the British Isles <laughs> in the puke. And, and, I, and closer inspection, it was a strip of Donna meat represented England right next to the lush green valleys of Wales, but represented by the greasy lettuce. And then there was blobs of taramasalata to the north, which represents Scotland, which, as we all know, is the birthplace of taramasalata. Right? Um, which is Gaelic for salad. <laughs> And then I thought, wow, he truly is British. He's so British. 
His organs knew how to paint <laughs> Britain with vomit. <laughs> and then he came to the second heave and, and he, he chundered this recycled bits of chips just to the west of, of Wales. And that was Northern Ireland. But he didn't do the Republic of Ireland because he was aware that they weren't part of the United Kingdom. <laughs> and that's how British he was. But he also made a potato-based joke about Ireland. And that's how British you are. <laughs> that's how British you are. So, I'm pleased you like that. In, in future, I will talk more about potatoes in Ireland because, as we all know, there's only one thing in Ireland, and that's the potato. Uh, all they do is potato, 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 potato. In fact, anyone from Ireland knows that their father was probably a potato. <laughs> Derma O'Brien O'Flatterly is actually Irish for get the fuck off of my potato. <laughs> All right. Uh, a lot of uh, Irish uh, popular culture came about in the Renaissance. You might know him as William Seamus Spear, his actual <coughs> Irish name, but it was corrupted by the, the British to become William Shakespeare. His famous uh, story was, of course, Potato and Juliet. <laughs> <laughs> it's about... It's about a noble girl called Juliet and a potato. It's not fucking funny. Potato, potato. Why for out there, potato? Right, I, I really, uh, I should go because it's getting late, but I really want to leave you with this uh, new bit. That uh, It's very new. In fact, I've got this uh, bit of Metro cutout. You'll see it's Bin Laden's last hiding place to be theme park. Can you see this? Right? Yeah, yeah. I, 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 I try and be topical, but all I can do is, like, genocide about Rwanda and Mali. But it's not funny. So, um, it says here, uh, there's going to be a wildlife zoo, f food street adventure, and paragliding <laughs> clubs, and jogging tracks. And I think the only thing that's missing there is uh, a really fun ride called waterboarding. <laughs> Which I think represents uh, all that America has done in Pakistan. Thank you very much. I'm Fauzi AC. Well, uh, waiting for her to come back. Uh